Hi, Craig Gators, Mrs. Collins here on Wednesday. Pippa and I are here. It is a dress up day for Homeschool Spirit Week. And today we are honoring our grandparents. It's Grandparents Day. So today I'm wearing purple and a red hat because of the poem. When I am an old woman, I shall wear purple with a red hat, which doesn't go and doesn't suit me. So that's my dress up outfit for today. Take my hat off and we will get started on today's read aloud. It is one that does honor grandparents, just as we are thinking of this generation that's most at risk and we're helping, why we're helping by staying home from school. This is called Saturday and Tea Cakes and it's by Lester Lemonek and paintings by Chris Sonkiet. And it is, the pictures are beautiful. It is a signed copy that was signed by the author that I picked up and want to share Saturdays and tea cakes with you. Ready, Pippa? Okay. When I was nine or 10 years old, I couldn't wait for Saturdays. Every Saturday, I got up early, dressed, and rolled my bicycle out of the garage. It looks like Pippa right there. Does that look like you, Pippa? Every Saturday, I crossed down our long, steep drive, slowing only enough to make the turn onto Thompson Street, then left onto Bells Mill Road. Pedal, 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 past Miss Caulfield's house. Pedal, 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 around the horse pasture and up the hill past the cemetery where my grandfather was buried. Pedal, 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 past Miss, Mrs. Grace Owen's house and up on Chandler Phillips 66. That's a gas station. Every Saturday, I crossed over the black hose by the gas pumps just to make the bell ring. Then I dropped my kickstand and checked the air in my tires. I stopped at Chandler's for another reason too. That's where I crossed the highway that ran right through the center of our town. My mother always said, you stop and look both ways when you get to Chandler's. I don't care if the light's green. I'll hear about it if you don't. And I knew she would too. In our little town, everyone knew everybody and told everything to anyone who would listen. So I always looked both ways. Pedal, pedal, pedal across Ross Street, then left for a slow coast down behind the bank of Hef Heflin, where I turned right onto Bedwell and whoosh, I zoomed downhill as fast as I dared. Pedal, pedal, pedal up the next hill and left onto Ullman Street. It was a long stretch to Mr. White's. I always stopped there to catch my breath in the shade of the old oak tree. One more small hill, pedal, 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 and then a right onto Gaithier Street. Now I could see my grandmother's drive. One, two, three, four driveways, and one last turn to the left. This was where my tires gave up their humming on pavement and began to crunch the crunching of gravel. Just before reaching Mama, uh, Mama's back porch, I slammed on my brakes, sending a shower of tiny pebbles into her flowers. Every Saturday, Mama was there sitting on her old metal glider. Creak, crack, creak, crack, sipping a cup of red diamond coffee and waiting. She was waiting for me. No one else, just me. Every Saturday, Mima called out, Come on into this house. Let's have us a bite to eat. In Mima's big kitchen, sunlight poured through the windows like a wonderful and waterfall and spilled all over the countertops, pooling up on the checkerboard floor. Every Saturday, she had hot biscuits, 
sweet butter and golden eagle syrup waiting on the kitchen table. Every Saturday, she poured a little coffee in my cup and filled the rest with milk and two spoonfuls of sugar. Then before long, Mama said, we best clear off these dishes away and get the yard before it gets too hot. I followed her out on the back porch. Let me put a little water on those ferns, she said. You go on ahead to the car house. That's what Mama called the garage. I'll be out directly. By the time I pulled the old lawnmower from the garage, Mama was already in the garden picking plump, ripe tomatoes for our lunch. Every Saturday, I pulled the starter rope again and again while the mower sputtered and spit. Finally, that old mower started and I struggled to push it through the dew wet grass, leaving row after row of fresh stripes on the lawn. From time to time, the mower choked on mouthfuls of wet grass that clung to the blades and to my bare leg. But by early afternoon, the dew pearls were gone, the grass was mowed and dry, and I was soaked with sweat. Every Saturday, I pushed the mower back into the garage, trudged to the back porch, and flopped onto that old glider. Creak, crack, creak, crack. Mom, Mama soon appeared with a tall glass of sweet iced tea. You just cool off and rest a spell. I'm going to make us a bite to eat. Before long, she came back with two big tomato sandwiches on hamburger buns. Every Saturday, I gobbled mine down like a hungry dog, but she nibbled at hers like a bird. Now, them some good tomatoes, she said. I know how you like a good tomato sandwich. Don't they taste a whole heap better when you're just picked them? We sat there a while listening to the calls of blue jays and the rhythm of that old glider. Then Mama looked at me sort of sideways and said, I reckon I know a boy who'd like some, something sweet to eat. And I grinned, yes, ma'am, I reckon you do. Come on, Mama said, heading toward the door. Let's get in that kitchen and see if we can't make us a mess. Every Saturday, she spread a cloth over the red countertop and scattered a fistful of flour across it, sending a cloud into the air. Then she set out a big bowl. Mama dipped a china teacup into the container of flour, scooped out a cupful, and skimmed over the top with her fingers. Then she dumped the flour into the bowl and added sugar from her black cookie jar. Her black cookie jar. She let the mixture drift through her hands like a sifted sand at the beach. When it felt right, Mama said, look at that Frigidaire. That's when she called her refrigerator and find me two sticks of blue bonnet. I pulled open the refrigerator and got out the margarine. I unwrapped the sticks and dropped them into the bowl. I mixed and mashed and mixed and mashed until the ingredients disappeared into a paste. It was smooth and yellow and smelled like fresh cotton candy at the country fair. Mom, Mama pinched off a little to taste. I expect we need a bit more sugar in this. She sprinkled sugar until the dough tasted just the way she thought it ought to. Now get me three eggs, she said. I tapped the first egg too hard, making a splatter onto the counter and down the outside of the bowl. I reckon we can call that half an egg, Mama said. Here, let me show you how to do it. Just tap them easy like and pull the shell apart over the bowl like this. Now you do the next one. It was hard work blending those eggs into the mix with a long wooden spoon. M Mama pinched another taste. My goodness, buddy, we didn't put no vanilla in here. Reach up in that cabinet and get me down the bottle of vanilla flavor. When the dough tasted just right, Mama rolled it out on the flour dusted cloth. Then I cut out the tea cakes with the rim of an old tin can. 
We carefully lifted the circles onto a cookie sheet and put them in the oven to bake 375 degrees for 15 minutes. Those 15 minutes seem to last forever. Are they ready, Mama? Not yet, buddy. Are they ready now, Mama? Not yet, buddy. Let's give them a little bit longer. And are they ready yet, Mama? I reckon they might be. She opened the oven door and the kitchen filled with a smell sweeter than summer gardenias, the smell of tea cakes. Every Saturday, I reached for one still steaming on the baking sheet. You better wait, buddy. They are gonna be mighty hot just yet. We waved until the tea cakes were cool enough. I'm sorry, we waited until the tea cakes were cool enough to lift from the baking sheet. Then we set them off on a plate. Every Saturday I ate one and then another and I looked at ma Mama. Is that all you want, buddy? You be sure to eat all you want. We made them tea cakes just for you. When I had eaten all I could, she set a few off on a saucer for herself and put the rest on a big sheet of aluminum foil. She folded the edges into a little handle at the top. Now you put these out there in your bicycle basket so you won't forget them. Every Saturday, I paddled over the gravel again and out Mama's drive. I glanced back over my shoulder. Every Saturday, Mama was there sitting in her old metal glider and waving. She was waving to me, no one else, just me. Don't worry, Mama, I won't ever forget. And that is the end. And it says, for Ma uh, Mama Thompson's delicious tea cake recipe, please visit us at, let's see what that says, um, peachtree-online.com slash teacakes.htm. So if you want that recipe, let's see if we can get that on there. I'll visit them right there. And that. Pippa is our read aloud for today. Thanks, boys and girls. We hope you're enjoying your dress up day and thinking of our grandparents and those people who have become sick as we stay home and try to stay well. Are you keeping up with your learning and your reading? I miss you. I'll check in with you tomorrow. Bye, boys and girls.